guys, I'm back for gameplay with this sweet, sweet green black deck. My opponent rolled a 20, so I'm not going to get to choose. I'm actually perfectly fine being on the draw with this deck. He's not saying anything, so I'm assuming he's on the play. Uh, I've lost a lot of card images from this new cards.xml file. I have. Opium Palace, Jungle Hollow, Rugged Highlands, so I have all the sources I need. I have a 4-drop here in Longshot Squad, a more for Kintry Invocation, and a Grim Contest. So I'm going to keep this. There are a lot of good draws that I can get. Notably something that, like Disowned Ancestor, or Archer's Parapet, but... Yeah, nothing to play turn one, so I'm just going to drop down an Opulent Palace and pass. This is just a green-black land, but he doesn't know that. He's playing a Jun deck, or sorry, a Absan deck, and he's also playing with Archer's Parapet. I would have liked to have a second copy of that. Uh, still nothing to do. I can't cast this Kintry Invocation. So I'm just going to play Tap Land. And pass. Still a lot of good draws that I could have. And he's not actually putting pressure on me, so I'm still very fine with just playing this out. He looks like he's playing a green-black deck too, actually. Splashing white, potentially. Grimmar Swiftwing, totally fine with that. This is zero pressure, he's essentially down a card. Drew our Atarka, the reason I have red sources in the deck. Uh, the question is, do I want to play this Blade Lockstone as a morph, or do I just want to play Jungle Hall on pass? Um, I think I just want to play Jungle Hall on pass, I want to play Longshot Squad next turn. Eh. Now I'm going to play Woolly Locks on this turn. There's a chance I draw an untapped land to play this long shot squad, and there's a chance I do want to just cast Trent Kintry or something. Though the chance is quite low. There's also a chance I want to cast Grim Contest to just kill the Swiftwing. Every chance like that is pretty low. So, Drew Hunt the Weak. That's not a land, so I'll just play this Jungle Hollow, gain a life. Uh, could play this Grim Contest to kill the Swift Wing, but that seems really irrelevant. So, I'm just going to pass the turn back. Also, this is an instant, so I don't have to decide now. No Siege Rhino, please. Orc Sure Shot. I'm a big fan of that card, actually. <coughs> Alright, 5 mana. At this point I could hunt the weak <coughs> with the Swiftwing. I'm getting a 1-1 one -one counter on my uh, on my Loyal Lock Stomp for potentially giving it reach later. I can Grim Contest with Swiftwing, or Grim Contest with Sure Shot. I think I want to hunt the weak with the Swiftwing. And my reasoning for doing that is Ogre Sure Shot, if he plays two creatures next turn, is just going to kill my Woolly Lock Stomp for free. And I don't really want that to happen. I'd rather have my uh, Woolly Locks not get a little bigger so I can avoid that situation. Um, I could also play Long Shot Squad and just give up on my Woolly Locks done, but I don't really want to do that. So here we go. Um, yeah, hunt the weakening time. <coughs> it's taken one damage. There's no point in attacking, you'll just block with Parapet, so... Yeah, I think I'm passing the turn here. Just really want to get up to 7 mana, play a Tarka, and just kill him. Or 
armament core, sure. Sure. I think the numbers you're looking for are 6 4. If I get another untapped land, I'll have a 6 7. Actually, I'll have a 7 8, which could even kill this thing through uh, and live through. Uh, one of its activations, so that's pretty nice. Let's draw an untapped land. Yeah! Just gonna play it past the turn. Sit on this 7-8 uh, Wooly Lockstone. That will get reach. Or give me an 8-8. Eight, eight. Either way, love it. it also is gonna start eating his creatures with Grim Contest. Ash and Cleric looks like a waste of a card. I love it. Sure. What? I'll block here. Uh, it's a right now. It's a two-two. So now I'll flip this. Six seven. Motherfucker. Uh, Absent charm gets me. Uh, XL. Take four. Probably not going to win this game now. That's a little disappointing. Rotting Mastodon. Talk about board stalls. If I had one more mana, I could Kintry and Rotting Mastodon, which would be sweet. But as of right now, Rotting Mastodon is quite acceptable. something like Double Grim Contest or Kintry and Vacation Grim Contest. Wow, looks like it's a bad card. Cool, I'm good with that. Sure, you shrink my body now, so I actually don't really care. Yeah, sure, sure. If he shrinks it twice, that's kind of a problem, actually. Oh, that's also... Oh, I can't win now. There's no fucking way. I have to take 7, 8, 9 if I want my best not to live, but it has to block the sure shot, so I can't win. Naturalize is kind of tempting because he has a, you know, Abzan Ascendancy, that's, that's a real card, and he also has a banner. So maybe Naturalize comes in, or maybe Return to the Earth comes in. Ah, it's just way too expensive to play that. It does have the upside of killing flyers though, but I don't really I'm not really worried about flyers right now. Oh, that was just an unfortunate series of plays. The Absan Charm was really what got me. I'm gonna take out this Awaken the Bear, I'm definitely the slower deck. And I'll play first, thank you. Uh, have a two drop, have a tri land. I don't have all my sources, but I do have two good spells, so I think I'll keep this. Sultai Emissary is defensive enough that I should be able to live through his uh, aggressive shenanigans. <coughs> it can also give me some value. Help me not flood out, sort of thing. Archer's Parapet's a good one. Definitely just going to play the Emissary, though. If he doesn't do anything, I would like to be able to just attack for one. Odds are I'll be doing that anyway. Tormenting voice, cool. As I said, not doing anything. Ugh, still getting a little flooded out here. Gonna play Parapet and attack with Emissary. Pass turn. Next turn I have Longshot Squad, which is pretty nice. Probably gonna attack with Emissary again. Just because Archer's Parapet can block whatever he puts out, might as well get some damage in. 
I did not see the extra color coming. Whoa! Never mind, Kintry Invocation time. Ooh, but the question is, I can Longshot Squad now, and then I can Outlast Longshot Squad, then play a Kintry Invocation next turn. It's less risky to do that. I walk into less removal spells. Though, having a 5-5 five five now is pretty sweet. I think I'm going to go with the safer play and the slower play. Which is just casting Longshot Squad and passing. <coughs> Get maximum value out of my cards, especially since I've been drawing a lot of lands. No Siege Rhino? Okay, I'm fine with that. So yeah, I'm going to outlast my Longshot Squad. Attack with Sultai Emissary, play Kintry Invocation. First attack with the Sultai Emissary. Cool, I'm good with that. Manifest the top card of my library. Let's find out what it is. Uh... It's a swamp. Okay, that's fine. I guess I can't see. I just didn't look at the side here. Anyway, um, good that I didn't draw the swamp. And now I'm going to outlast Longshot Squad. Back counter. It's a 4-4. Four four and cast Kintry Invocation. What a beating. Swampalicious can trade with uh, Timely Hordemate here if it wants to come in. I'm fine if he wants to use a spell to kill my swamp, so that's that's good. Absent Ascendancy is fucking bullshit. I'm glad he only has one creature out for it. But it's still insane that he got it. Again. It's really annoying, actually. Uh, what am I walking into here? There's actually not really anything I can think of that costs a mountain in a swamp as an instant that will blow me out and kill my spirit warrior and keep his tiny horde made alive. So I'm going to attack with the spirit warrior if he has something good for him because I'll still have a long shot squad that's outlasting. So he didn't have anything. Cool. And now I'm just going to outlast my long shot squad. Make it a 5-5, five, five, play a land, play an Abzan Kin Guard, which has lifelink, and pass the turn back. Interesting mana tap here, Alabaster Karen, that's fine. Kintry? Sure, you get a 3 3. Seems like my Kintry was better. He does have a double block now that's pretty sweet, which is Alabaster Carrot and Kintry on uh, my 5 5. But that double block kind of actually makes me think I can attack with Kin Guard and Longshot Squad as well. Ugh, even with this manifested land, I'm getting flooded really hard. So, if I attack with everything, he can double block here, here on the long shot squad. Spirit Warrior gets through, he can trade with Timely Horde Mate if he so chooses and get a 1 1 spirit out of the deal. Um, seems pretty good for me, it'll clear off his uh, 3 3. But I'm actually not really comfortable with this trade. I think I can sit back and be fine. 
and I'll last my long shot squad. A 6-6 six, six is infinitely better than a 5-5 five, five when he has nothing but three toughness creatures on the board. And I do have a 7 drop, so I'm going to cast play a land for my hand. <coughs> I suppose I already had one mana for it, but I don't have the red yet, which is kind of a problem. I don't know what sort of color shenanigans he's doing. That's a lot of basics of a lot of different colors. That's very greedy. Raider Spoils, that's cool. Uh, that's a warrior, that's pretty sweet. Alabaster Kirin, thankfully, is not a warrior. Cranial Archive, okay, this guy officially doesn't even know what he's doing himself, so pretty cool with that. Uh, I can Grim Contest. I can outlast my Longshot Squad and Grim Contest my Longshot Squad on the Timely Horde Mate or the Alabaster Kirin in response to a double block on my Spirit Warrior. But he's probably going to single block Spirit Warrior with Timely Horde Mate. Hmm. But if he double blocks here on the Spirit Warrior, and single blocks Timely Horde Mate, or sorry, single blocks Timely Horde Mate on Spirit Warrior, double blocks Alabaster Cure Warrior Token on Long Shot Squad, I'm good with that. Yeah, my attacks are just really good this turn, and I could potentially blow them out with Grim, Grim Contest. So, let's go swinging. Yep, that was obvious. What's the rest of your blocks? <coughs> Trade there, I'm fine with that. Okay. I gained three. He gets two spirits, totally cool with that. He's down to seven. So this long shot squad is putting a ton of pressure on him. And actually this parapet's gonna start putting pressure on him as well. I can Grim Contest to actually trade the Spirit Warrior with uh or just kill the Spirit Warrior with my archer's parapet at very minimal risk because I don't really care if the parapet dies. I could potentially blow him out if he does some sort of triple blocking thing. He has no cards in hand, so his plan is to triple block. Uh, he will sack the Abzan banner, but very little you can do with the green and the black. Especially very little uh, aggressive plays you can do. Let's soak champion. Can't block. Cool. I'm fine with that. Yeah, it's a warrior. That's pretty sweet, but I'm still not intimidated. Is he going to attack? I understand attacking maybe with one spirit. Anok guide. 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, I forgot to use my parapet. That's, that's definitely a mistake on my part. Um, one that I don't usually make and never making paper magic, but sometimes I'll mind trips you up, especially when you haven't done it in a while. So my attack this turn is Longshot Squad. He's probably going to double block Warrior Spirit on Longshot Squad. I can also attack with my Manifested Swamp. I think I'm fine trading it with the Spirit Token. And I'll just blow him out by playing Grim Contest, using Archer's Parapet to kill the Warrior, just kill his Spirit for free, and basically wipe his board, he ends up with a 2-1 flyer and a blood soak champion. And I have a 2-2 two -two that can block flyers. Yeah. I'm fine attacking here. Uh, what if he wants to block warrior on manifested creature? I still blow him out because I kill the warrior for free regardless of what he does with it. The most logical block in my eyes is Warrior Spirit on Longshot Squad and Spirit on Manifested Creature. Double Spirit on Longshot Squad? How does that make sense? So I think he's doing Spirit Warrior on Longshot Squad and Spirit on.
So now Igrim contest. He has no cards in hand. This is just going to end the game. So I lose my manifested creature, he loses his spirit. He's left with one more spirit and a blood-soaked champion. And I am left with a 2-2 Anok guide with reach. Uh, add counter. And uh, Archer's Parapet activation at the end of his turn. Which I will not forget. Good old cranial archive. In the three mountains, three, sorry, two swamps, one plains, two forest deck. Is that all five colors? One, two. That's four colors. He's missing blue. And he also forgot his uh, Absent Ascendancy trigger. Yeah, I'm not worried about this deck. I do think Naturalized staying in is fine. Just because he also has Raider Spoils, so Naturalized is actually really good. The problem with his deck is the consistency is just going to kill him 99% of the time. There's so many force mulligans with this deck. When you're playing that many basics and that many colors, like you have to get lucky to even be able to play magic. I have a turn three Tusk Guard Captain. Kintry Invocation Grim Contest work well with a lot of draws. Uh, you cost you to dash. I don't understand why he thinks this card has flat, uh, sorry, haste. The dash cost is two. Then it wouldn't have haste anyway. Air of the Wilds is a decent draw, gives me a turn two play. I'd rather have a uh, Archer's Parapet, but, you know, can't always get what you want. Maybe I can't get what I want. Let's see if I top deck. Nope, I didn't, but still gonna find the problem with Mardu Shadow Sphere is it's still a 1 mana 1 1. And it will just die to a 2 2. If he really wants to use a spell, he's still gonna trade. So I'll block. Feed of Resistance, good for you. I actually really don't care that he's using a feed on the Shadow Sphere. It's a 1 for 1, and. The Shadow Spear is still just going to brick into this Tusk Guard Captain. Now he's down to three cards in hand. Pass this turn after playing a bad card. I can outlast Tusk Guard Captain and play Grim Contest when he goes into. Or I can just Grim Contest now. Regardless, I think I'm outlasting Tusk Guard Captain. I think I can hold out on Kintry Invocation and I can just Grim Contest. Uh, the question is do I want to do it before he attacks or at the end of his turn. Beginning of combat. Grim contest. Here and here. 
harsh sustenance targeting me so I lose three I don't understand why you do that instead of on the captain but okay and now I lose one more Marty Skull Hunter do I want to attack or do I want to outlast? I think I want to outlast. Um, so yeah, outlast Tusk Guard Captain. Make it a 4-5. And I think 5-5 five five is good enough for my Kindred Invocation. Spirit Warrior. Multi-color 5-5. Five five. Especially since he's all tapped out. Excellent. like how this game is going. I have a 4-5 and a 5-5, five five. he's down to two cards in hand and has a 2-1 and a 1-3. He's passing turn back and I'm outlasting for value. I can attack with the Spirit Warrior or the Tusk Guard Captain. Eh. Question is if I find taking three. I think I am. Uh, question, the other question is am I fine letting him draw a card if he plays a Raider Spoils and taking five instead. I think I just want to attack this turn with the Spirit Warrior and play a Mardu Skull Hunter. Loses a Russia battle, that's good for me. Uh, but it means the last card in his hand is actually really, really good, so I'm going to keep the Tusk Guard Captain back on blocking duty. Passes turn back. Ah, uh, yes. Rekshasa Death Dealer is going to seal this game up. Uh, I'm going to outlast Tusk Guard Captain, play Death Dealer, and attack on Spirit Warrior. See no reason not to. That's game. There's no way. Especially with cards like Cranial Archive clogging his deck with worthless worthless stuff. Whisper of the Wilds, pretty good. So I think I just start swinging in with everything. If you want to block Smarty Skull Hunter with a Rashing Cleric, that's fine. Blood Soap Champion can't block, so he would take. 2, 4, 6, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Ugh. Really? 6? Oh, okay. Yeah. He left. So there you go. Um, this deck is sweet, and it's one of my favorite decks to play in uh, Favor Forge and Cons. Um, I did a talk quite a bit about this deck, so I'm glad that it performs the way I expected it to. Kintry Invocation, uh, a Kintry Invocation, and got the uh, Archer's Parapet Disowned Ancestor. Um, never got to see the Abzan Beastmaster in action, but there were actually a lot of boards where it just would have been very, very, very good. And Whisper of the Wilds, very good. Sultai Emissary, good in these defensive sort of decks. Atarka was much as I suspected, and if you guys saw from this match, um, this, it was a 7-drop, it just stayed in my hand for the vast majority of the game, and I really couldn't cast it, especially, well, and it was just putting me a card down for the vast majority of the game, so. I'm not a fan of 7-drops, I'm not a fan of Atarka, especially when it dies to Breath of Dragonfire and other common removal spells. Um, Sure, if it gets an attack in, that that's pretty game ending. But going a card down for the vast majority of the game for playing this is just not worth it, in my opinion. And if I went back and changed the deck, I would be playing uh, this Abomination of Gadul off of my blue splash lands. And the fact that it's a morph just makes it a very easy splash. Yeah, not a fan of Atarka. 
uh, cards I've gained respect for. Love Danok Guide. It actually might have even... Like, the fact that it has plus one plus one counter makes it pretty sweet. Uh, you saw in that game I was able to make it a 2-2 reach for two, which is great. Um, Absent Kind Guard is living up to the name of Absent Guide's little brother. May even be better, just because it's one color. Uh, Sultai Emissary did a lot of work there. I would have been even more flooded than I was in that last game uh, if I didn't just get a land off the top with Sultai Emissary. And also, the 2-2 body trades really well. So, yeah, big fan of Sultai Emissary, especially in defensive decks. Rakshasa the Death Dealer everybody knows about. Grim Contest. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I have been proven right. Grim Contest is a wonderful, wonderful card, and the colors, the color synergy that you just get off of this card is superb. It is phenomenal. In fact, it may have even exceeded my expectations in just how good it is. Uh, three mana instant speed fight cards are very, very hard to come by. In fact, I don't can't recall any off the top of my head, and it just works so well with with all the high toughness creatures and all these sorts of toughness matters cards and absent beast master country invocation grim contest just where fits right into the deck and is very solid removal i may even increase this to a 3.5 the card is just phenomenal um it is very color committing though so i have something to say for that never got to see crux of fate which is kind of sad hunt the weak felt slow probably worse than grim contest in this deck Actually, certainly worse than Grim Contest in this deck, but has some synergies with the counter, and it, it was acceptable removal. Yeah, not much to say past that. Everybody knows about all these other cons cards. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you all have a great day.